My spirit is ready. I feel the ruach so heavy. I eat the word like an Eddie. My tongue is a sword. I will make me a Jamaican. I slice through demons like machetes. I'm yelling. What's up, my beautiful sunflowers? I am Key Love Scott, and welcome back to my channel where I help uplift, encourage, and inspire others on how to be made in His image. If you guys are new to my channel, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you feel like this video is giving you helpful information. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So in today's video, you guys, we are going to be talking about Christian dating boundaries. And before we jump into it, I'm going to let you guys know what a boundary is. So a boundary pretty much is a line that marks the limits of an area. It's like drawing the line in the sand. And setting up boundaries in a dating relationship is basically going to help you because when we're setting clear physical boundaries up front in the relationship, it is essential to preserving purity and to help prevent doing something that we may regret along the way. So I took some notes on what exactly me and my husband did while we were dating and I was very intentional about what I was looking for in a future spouse and he was very intentional with dating as well and deciding you know what he wanted in a future wife and so that's kind of how we moved into marriage so first off you guys you want to form a friendship a friendship first gives you foundation to build off of that is something that you can carry on not only as a friend but also deep until you know when you get married because when you're married you know when you get past the honeymoon stage and stuff like that you at least want to be able to fall back on that friendship and being able to have that person to still talk to so that you can still like your husband at the end of the day even though you may not still have all of those butterflies and stuff so it's just a really great way to be realistic and to be like hey you can see first off you can see if they're mad you can see how they react to anger you can see how they react to the people that they love you can see how they are acting when they're around other people such as friends their families are they good to their moms are they disrespectful to their moms these are things that you really want to check out early on to determine if this is a person who you feel like you can be married to and can stay married to second timothy chapter 2 verse 22 says so flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness faith love and peace along with those who call on the lord from a pure heart set clear physical boundaries up front for example kissing you're like hey i can't kiss because when we do kiss you know it makes me want to do a little extra you can't spend the night if you come over i can't have us kissing i can't have us spend the night anything like that living together us as believers should already know you should not be shacking up you should not be living with a spouse before marriage um, I waited all the way until we got married. I was 25 when we finally moved out into our own place together, okay? I don't want us hanging out in my room. I don't want us hanging out in my room. I don't want us doing this. I don't want us doing that because when, our, when we're in the room, you know, it's kind of like that intimate, sacred space that I'm allowing you to enter and things could take off from there. And then also saying, I prefer if we hung out around others. So if you're doing those things, if you're kissing, if you're spending the night and doing stuff like that, you're pretty much setting the stage for opening the door to the possibility of sinning, okay? And the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy to flee from sexual or youthful passions and pursue righteousness. I'm not saying that anything is wrong with those things, but it is always best to stay away from doing those things with a particular person okay if you're just doing these things by yourself like if you live in your own apartment that's fine there's nothing against that um it's nothing wrong with you hanging out with somebody in your room but when it comes to laying down and it comes to cuddling and it comes to play fighting that stuff can lead into something more okay so first corinthians chapter 15 33 says do not be deceived bad company ruins good mortals so um, good morals. So even though you may be a righteous person, you really like somebody and this person who you like, you invite them over to hang out with you and they may not have been ra like raised the same way you were. They may not be a Christian. They may not be a believer or, you know, they may not have God first in their life. They'll say, hey, come out with me. And then you're around all of these other people who are drinking, who are smoking, who are you know defiling themselves and it's like the longer you hang around stuff like that they can too corrupt 
your morals. You may be like, oh, you know, it's not so bad. The more you're exposed to it, the more it becomes normalized and the more it's like not that big of a deal anymore when in fact it is a big deal. So those people can pull you away from going to church. They can pull you away from going to Bible study every Wednesday. They can pull you away from being around other believers and from praying. And you won't even realize it because you're just so hard eye emoji about this person that you don't even see anything wrong. And so it sneaks past you. And that's what you want to be very, very careful of. So the next thing says, I feel tempted when. So you want to have these conversations with this future person that you're dating, who you're dating intentionally. And you're like, you know, I feel tempted when we lay in bed together kissing. I feel tempted when you wear that outfit around me. I feel tempted when you hold me from behind. That just does something to me. I feel tempted when, you know, as a guy, if he's dating a girl, he may say, I feel tempted when you twerk. Um, these are all things that I myself am bringing up. This is literal stuff that I would like bring up to my best friend at the time who is now my husband. I literally formed a friendship with him and we were, you know, taking things very, very slow and he would come over and, you know, he would spend the night sometimes and you know, that would that would be like, oh, you know, I kind of like him, like him, you know, I want him to stay a little bit more, you know, and when you when we're doing that stuff, you guys, it makes you want to do more than what you should be doing. You know what I mean? So it's like you just don't want to put yourself in tempting scenarios. So talking about things that causes you to be tempted is very important that they understand that because then like my boyfriend at the time, he was like, OK, then I won't do that, you know. That's good to know. I don't want to tempt you. You know what I mean? He's like, okay, good. And I was like, I don't want to tempt you either. But, you know, that's something that we really have to be very, very upfront about. So 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 says, Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexual immoral person sins against his own body. So you want to make sure that you're fleeing from all of that. Um, and the next thing you want to talk about your person with is what I'm looking for is to be courted. You're being very intentional. You're letting them know this is not just a fling. This is not just a one hitter quitter. I'm here to try to find my person. You know, I'm looking for a potential husband. I'm looking for a serious relationship. So that way you can let them know up front, hey, if you're not looking for that, there's no point in me wasting my time. You know, if you're not feeling that, then I can just move on. So good things that you guys can do, which is what we did, just to kind of stay out more and not be in front of each other's faces 24-7, is, you know, you can go to Bible study together. We went to Bible study together every single Wednesday, and a lot of the people there, they knew us, and they started proclaiming, like, good news over us and speaking life over us. Like, oh, yeah, your wife is over here. And I would be like, I'm not his wife. But, you know, deep down inside, I was like, but... That's what people do when you start coming. And then people started to sow us money just for coming to Bible study. They're like, we are so happy just to see young people in the word of God and trying to get to know God. We don't get that often. So, you know, not only were they speaking life over us, but they were also just giving us money and telling us, here, go out to eat, go enjoy yourselves. And that was so beautiful. Another thing you guys can do is go to church together. And also, number one is to keep your focus on God. So no matter what, if you have God the center and you guys are building that foundation up front foremost, then you guys are going to be totally fine because you're building that foundation. A lot of us mess up because we jump into relationships. You know, we're automatically in bed with that person. And then, you know, we're like, God, please, I want to be with this person. Let me marry this person. When you should have gone to God first. You know what I mean? He should always be the first person. God, is this the person who you have for me? And, you know, that's what I did. I prayed and I asked God. You know, if this is the one for me, please let other people who I don't even know, like just come up to us and just speak life over us. And I literally had that happen numerous of times. OK, so Psalms 37, chapter three, verse four says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. We must rely on the Holy Spirit to help us during these times, you guys. Even though we may feel like that we want to jump the gun and we feel like we're so sure we're going to marry this person, you just never know. God may have other plans. So you want to make sure that you are in 
the same, you're in God's will and that you guys are on the same page and that you are going to him before you go to anybody else, before you go to your mama, your best friend, you go to God first and you're asking him. But he's not going to bless no mess. So don't try to do it backwards and try to get with the person and then doing everything all scrambled. There is an order of things. God is a God of order, okay? So you have to make sure that you are remaining Focus and keeping him first because if he sees that you're making this relationship an idol, then it won't last very long. So, you guys, please hit that subscribe button if this video was helpful for you guys. I love you so much. And um, go ahead and give me a like, and I will see you guys in another video. Mwah.